Hey everyone, here's a quick heads up. The Agile Online Summit is coming soon. You can get all the details at uh, bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. Yes, it's all lowercase, all one word. That's bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. Stick with us till the end of the episode to know the dates, the tracks, and some surprises we have ready for you. But for now, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday, the Change Leadership episode this week with Jelena Vucinic. Hey, Jelena, welcome back. Hi, Vasco. Very happy to be here. So Wednesdays is, of course, the change day here on the podcast, and the change is one of those things that we are always being part of. Sometimes we know we are, sometimes we don't know we are, but we're always part of some change process going on. So we want to hear a story of such a process that you were involved with. Walk us through the steps, how it worked or how it went from beginning to end. And then as you go through the steps, highlight for us the tools, the tips, the tricks, and the techniques you learned back then that you still apply today? Mm-hmm. Um, the story that I have when it comes to change is something happening very recently um, in my organization. It's about, it's a scaled organization. So there are around 200 engineering teams as a part of research and development. And uh, basically the, the change that uh, was introduced was more about the the scaled way of, way of working. Uh, we, we, do have certain scaled um, framework uh, fitting our organization. And basically the change was about restructuring how the the whole scaled process works. So uh, some some roles were changed, some some not existing anymore. Uh, There were some uh, shifting when it comes to who belongs to which uh, department uh, and also who is collaborating with whom in which manner. So basically the process on on a scale level when it comes to how teams contribute uh, to the product itself and uh, how they collaborate. And underlining change is also some kind of mindset shift. Uh, so when it we wanted to get so we realized that there is a chain from customer to the engineering teams is maybe too long and uh, the the wish was to shorten it. Uh, so to get get really teams closer to the source of the requirements, source of the end customer. Uh, and that also required some bit of mindset shifting when it t- comes to c- how people are working together. Uh, and yeah, um, how how learnings from it or or how it's going um it's still ongoing uh i, I have to say that and um th- there are already some learnings and one of them is that um it, we shouldn't go too fast and not too much so um introducing maybe one thing at a time and uh being very transparent about um next steps the current steps the next steps i mean i know it might sound very obvious to everyone who is uh who is familiar with the change process, but uh, transparency and communication, 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 really constant communication about what are we doing? How are we doing? Uh, and of course, listening to the input of people. So overall, my one of the takeaways is that it definitely takes time. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, we need to acknowledge that. And uh, again, maybe if, um, reminding ourselves that aim for less, uh, do less, and then iterate on it. So, um, and on one side, we, uh, the organization was also communicating that, that not all the answers are are there and there are some unclarities. And that's also something that needs to be managed. There are, there are teams and people who are not that comfortable with the level of uncertainty. And therefore we need to recognize who needs more information, who needs more assurance, who needs more communication in which manner and who not, who is fine with giving some um, simpler guidelines and uh, maybe letting them live uh, the process, the new process, the new roles, and uh, then uh, doing retrospective on that. So acknowledging also differences in uh, between teams, between people is something that I also highlight here. 
That's a great point, right? Like not everybody will receive the change in the same way. Not everybody will have the same priorities. Not everybody wants the same amount of information. That diversity is very important to acknowledge mm -hmm. at the start. Uh, but but as you were, like you, you say, this process is ongoing, which is uh, of course understandable because it does take a long time to change such a large organization. But how was it introduced at the start? Like, do you remember some of the things that you think were really great practices that really helped with the beginning of that process? Yes, yes. So, uh, as I mentioned, communication is a key point. So, first of all, uh, there there was uh, I think there was there were some smaller announcements, but there was also bigger announcements when it comes to the change. Um, written and verbal, uh, and that was also followed up with uh, ask me anything sessions. I think that was very important. So uh, that basically explaining the reasoning again and again, iterating, communicating the why. I mean, we we see that in user stories how important that is, but also when it comes to change, communicating the why and doing that in a bigger setup, but also in a smaller setups, like in team setup, one-on-one -on -one setups. And here, I, I really need to underline the key element, and, and may, I will come also to the tip then, um, in a, in a scaled setup, but we can also descale it to any setup. I think, again, uh, empowering leaders, empowering the persons and, and giving them the tools and information and time and uh, support to communicate and to explain and also to listen to the feedback and to react to the feedback is something. So having a kind of a system where we where we listen and collect feedback and then um we also changed some things. So from the start, based on the feedback that was received. So, uh, but I think the leaders played a significant role there. And when it comes to very practical thing here, I can recommend uh, a tool. I don't know, is it officially a tool, but a relationship map. So uh, basically it's a tool where that suggests that you sit down, you or a team or a leaders and draw who are the who are the players in this field and basically then identifying who are the supporters who are maybe in different ones who are the ones that are maybe not going to support this change and then focusing on those who can help to drive the change process change forward and i think that was very important here so identifying those persons those leaders it doesn't even need to be a formal leadership it can be someone who is very influential uh, who has a lot of connection who is maybe longer in the organization and then uh basically briefing, talking with these persons and uh, in making sure that they have all the answers and all the information, because if they do have that, then they will transfer it further. So that was something that I would. I really like that relationship map. That's uh, uh, one of the things that is very important for us to understand as Scrum Masters is that we don't really do the work for others. We work through others, right? So we help mm -hmm. others do the work they need to do, including when it comes to change. And by having that concept of the relationship map, we actually understand how the organization conveys information in a mm -hmm. very practical manner, and also who is more likely to work together with, and then, you know, whatever the person or the team is that mm -hmm. we are supporting. So it's really important to have that ability to understand that there's a lot of informal networks within an mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. And those informal networks can either be uh, used and, and amplified to do the job that needs to be done, or then, of course, ignored. And then we mm -hmm. lose the opportunity to increase the communication and also the solidarity and collaboration in the organization. Exactly. exactly. That was a great story. Thank you for sharing that, Yelena. You're very welcome. Happy, happy to share. <laughs> Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around. So as I was saying at the beginning of the show, on October 22nd this year, we will have the first day of the Agile Online Summit 2024. The summit will take place from October 22nd to 24th. So make sure you book your calendars as there will be loads of sessions for you to attend, including live QAs with the speakers, networking sessions and more. This year, we're also organizing regular networking events online so that you get to talk and meet your peers before the summit even starts. So if you want to know more, check them out at uh, bit.ly forward slash 
Agile Online Summit 24. That's uh, all one word, all lowercase. That's bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. You can sign up for a free ticket and get notified when those warm up events will be organized. So stay tuned. Now, regarding the summit, our opening keynote will be Marshall Goldsmith's exposition of a project he's been working on for a while. That's marshallgoldsmith.ai. And uh, Marshall is an author and also a leadership coach who sold over 3 million books worldwide and has been considered twice number one leadership thinker in the world by Thinker50. And you definitely don't want to miss that. If you want to know more about the tracks, here they are. We will have four tracks. The first track is Shift from Product to People. In this track, we will explore what we call the third wave of Agile adoption, exploring psychological safety, coaching techniques, and more to unlock your team's potential. In this track, you can learn to foster trust, encourage innovation, and build high-performing teams. Transform your approach and the future of Agile to be much more people-centric. The second track we have for you is value-centric product development. In this track, we will learn how to master product management and ownership by focusing on value. We will learn to identify, validate, and deliver what customers truly need and dive into customer-centric approaches, experimentation techniques, and continuous market validation ideas. We have to accept that if Agile is to succeed, we have to become value-centric, and that's what we explore in this track. The next track is titled Agile Coaching Masterclass. We want to help take your coaching to the next level and transform team performance. Develop key Agile coaching skills, emphasizing people-centric and value-centric approaches in line with the previous tracks. And we will help you learn how to guide teams towards value focus and effectiveness. In this track, we want to help you unlock the potential of the individuals and the organizations you will be working with. After all, the future of Agile is coaching-centric. And finally, the last track, and definitely not the least, is all about the future of Agile. Explore the trends shaping Agile's evolution. The previous three tracks do that as well. Discover real-world success stories from innovative companies pushing the boundaries of what's possible today. And learn how practitioners are evolving Agile practices, gain insights in how to revolutionize your own approach. After all, the future of Agile is here, so let's explore it. You will also have the opportunity to network with your peers, so get your ticket and join our Slack at bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit. That's all lowercase, all one word, bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. As always, we have free tickets and the VIP ticket, so check them out. It will all be available at bit.ly forward slash Agile Online Summit 24. I'll see you on the conference floor.